When you're soldering, one of the first things you need to do is tin your wires or your surfaces that you're going to solder together. You don't want to just stick them together and then stick solder on it and expect it to work out. What you want to do is get the wire hot and you want the solder to melt onto the wire. If you don't want to just get the solder, melt the solder and then stick it on there. You want your wire to be hot and you'll see it kind of melt in and wick your the wire will actually absorb the solder and that's a really good tinned wire there once your wires are tinned very well you can turn them and make sure that they're tinned all the way around then it's pretty simple just um, try not to move it as you go ahead and get them hot and then try to be as still as possible while it's cools. It only takes a few seconds but if you move it if you move it while it's trying to cool you can get what's called a cold, cold solder joint which isn't what you want so try to hold it really still. When you're soldering little bitty components like this little microphone or a transistor you might not want to have the your iron as hot as possible and you might want to try to make it quick because if you get these really really hot you might damage them so be careful with that so here's my iron um, just get, be sure to use the little sponge get it a little wet before you start that way when your iron starts getting junk on it you go ahead and just Clean it real quick, get a little bit of fresh solder on there, and you're ready to start working. And if junk starts building up, see some bubbles there, just... So one thing to note is whenever you're soldering, you get extra solder on your tip, uh, you'll want to go ahead and shake that extra solder off. Um, but usually, when it hits the table, it It'll, it'll dry. This has a pretty big glob. It's still a little wet, but it'll dry and you can just pick it off and usually doesn't, doesn't hurt your countertops. Notice that I have this little fan here. It's not really good to breathe as much uh, smoke as possible, so I, I made this little whisper fight quiet fan. It's just a, a PC quiet PC fan but I wanted something really quiet but it would still make a little bit of a breeze get the smoke out of your face so you aren't just breathing it so when appropriate it's good to have a I think it's called a helping hand to help hold your uh, the things you're working on because you don't only have so many hands here I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the surfaces by tinning them really good with some fresh solder and you can tell my iron is definitely hot enough to get the solder on there and um, if your iron isn't isn't hot enough you might have trouble getting the solder to to tin on there right so the temperature having a good temperature on your iron is important trim them up a little bit apply the two surfaces here When you're troubleshooting a board and maybe there's intermittent uh, issues going on, you might check uh, people's solder job and see and make sure that the solder's holding. I found one here. It's a good example of a, a cold solder joint. It's actually, there's something here that could wiggle. But not always just stuff that wiggles. You can see that there's a break in the solder. A lot of times they're really hard to spot, but you'll notice that 
even when it's down close there's like a little ring around it there's like a little line that you'll once you see a few of them you'll be able to uh, detect them and know that you need to just slap some new solder on there and fix it up all right I'm gonna really show you what happens when you're not hot enough here my iron is hot enough to melt the solder but you can see I'm having trouble getting it on there it's because the the iron isn't heating up the metal you want to heat up the metal and then apply the solder to the metal so look that didn't even stick it's just not hot enough my iron isn't big enough alright so now I've cranked my iron up to about 800 degrees to see what happens first thing you want to do is get a little solder on your iron so it can make contact with your whatever your wire then you want to get your wire hot hot enough and then you can actually put the solder not directly on the iron but probably down on the wire this thing is so huge that um, I probably shouldn't be doing it with this small of an iron but there it's starting to get warm and you can see the solder is actually starting to stick it's not uh, gonna just fall off 